Welcome back to the course. In this video, we'll cover the filtering functionality of Roam, which is in the middle between a beginner functionality and a more niche and difficult advanced feature of Roam. Filters can be really useful to sort through information. For example, as I'll soon illustrate, when you've got a ton of linked references to a page or a ton of blocks on a page, filters can be a very useful way to focus on the information that you really need to get that information quickly in front of you to just sort through it. But on the other hand, they're not essential, not even needed in any non-essential way. They're just not required for building the system that we're going to learn in this course for doing the effective reading for building your notes and for outputting them. Personally, I almost never use filters actually, but a lot of people in the Rome community talk about them a lot and it has some use cases. So I thought I'd show you and then you can decide for yourself, uh, whether you want to go ahead and use them. But also the second reason for talking about them is that they serve as an illustration for my argument why tags, mere tagging is not enough. Why tags are an ineffective knowledge association structure. I'll go into this more deeply in the videos on active studying and how to take good notes, but consider this kind of a primer. All right. Filters, what they can do, uh, they have two main applications. The first one is filtering linked references on pages or tag. So let's say I have the fake news tag. So I'll have a block that is information from an article or a paper, and I'll have it tagged with the fake news tag. So as you can see, I've already uh, written something about fake news and here are the linked references. But as you can see, this is important, by the way, there are 222 of them. Take note of them because that will be part of my complaint about this. So here I have a, it's a paper. Don't worry, by the way, about the side keys. That's what this called is an author 2020, three words of a title that will become clear soon, how that works, why that's important. And this is a pretty long topic of the paper. Fake news, a pretty long excerpt. And I've tagged it with a claim on fake news. There is this paper. I just gave it a bunch of tags, such as fake news. I'm just journaling something and I'm tagging it with fake news. As you can see, there are 222 linked references, which is a lot. So what you can do is you can filter the linked references. For example, I only want to have mentions of fake news that are related to social media. For example, I can click on that. And as you can see now, there's, it's very narrowed. So that means using the filter, it's very easy for me to find the information in my database. Finding information in my database specifically means here finding blocks that have both the fake news tag and the social media tag. And I can even go further and also uh, say that I want to have blocks that are tagged with fake news, social media, and post truth solutions. And there's two left of them. So this is a report. And as you can see here, I just copied over the sections that I thought were worth having in my database. This is before I was doing the system that I'm teaching you now, and I haven't seen the need to process these things, but this is something that we're going to see a lot more. This is how a lot of people take notes. They just copy over interesting sections or they highlight those sections in the PDF or in the paper. And then there are ways to get those highlights into Rome. And then the idea is then I'll tag these highlights with fake news, for example, and then by using some filters and other things, when I'm ready to write a paper or an essay about fake news and social media and post truth solutions. I will have the information presented to me very clearly and I can find it on the block level. So that's, uh, it's neat, but it doesn't go as far as you would wish. This approach is something that I'd argue and for which I'll give a couple of reasons right now, actually, and also in uh, future videos, let's go back to the filtering thing. Let's say you just have a list like that with 222 mentions of the fake news tag. So what actually do you have when you've got that? My claim would be that. These are, this is an ineffective knowledge association structure to see that more clearly, we need to look a little bit at what it looks like when you're filtering blocks on a page instead of linked references. So to show that I'll go to the, my page, my notes of the 
famous uh, sapiens book which is also a page i made notes i took before i was doing this system which makes it uh, perfect to illustrate it right now so as you can see as i was just already illustrating with the report on truth decay and the fake news things what i have here is just passages of the book these are all the passages that i highlighted and that i found a way to import into rome something that i'll show quite soon in one of the upcoming videos how that works and then i just gave it some tags right cognitive revolution robin dunbar with dunbar's number and so on the idea being that since i have tagged old blocks that relate to whatever anthropology with uh with that tag when i ever want to write a paper or an essay that is in some way related to anthropology i will just go to the uh, tag and then as you can see it's this is not something that's very central to my research and then i can see all dimensions of anthropology related stuff in my database and look through those and find a structure in there so you just have passages and you tag the passages and then use the tags to look through your database that's how most people take notes but highlighting and tagging is not enough you should stop doing that it's not enough in the sense that it doesn't get you the results you want it doesn't get you a retention of the material and it doesn't get your mastery of the material in a way sufficient for you to be able to write about it that's something that i'll claim and that i'll argue for now and also in further videos uh, especially the ones that cover active reading but let's me first demonstrate the other use of filters on the page level so you click filters and let's say i want to have all the blocks of sapiens that are about let's say religion and what you can do if you shift click a block it will exclude all the blocks i mentioned that so i shift click christianity and now i only have things that mention religion and that do not mention christianity so that's another functionality of the filtering button so this might look uh, okay you might be like okay this is nice i can i can search my database with filters and as long as i tag everything that should allow me to just find whatever i need so not really even though if you have a page with a lot of information like the sapiens page filtering can be a really powerful way to narrow down exactly what you want to look at that's true that's true but I think there's an argument to be made that you shouldn't rely on methods like this for getting out your information in the first place. So one of the reasons for that is that filters are, you can call them brute searches. It just gets you a list of 200 things when you tag, and then you're just going to search through them by filters. And then you still only have the original source material. You don't have anything in your own words. You don't have anything that you can work with. You haven't specified any of the relationships. You haven't said anywhere, okay, of these 222 mentions of fake news, this is a claim. This other source explains uh, that observation. This uh, paper contradicts that paper. You see what I'm getting at? It's going to take you a lot of time if you want to write something about fake news and you have 222 linked references, but you haven't done any of the work to process the material. All it gets you, all you know is that these linked references share a certain topic. Even if you have the filters, it will still take you a lot of work to see what arguments are in there, what explains what, how exactly they are linked. And these tags, and same thing with folders in, in programs like Evernote, they actually just become a jumbled mess after a couple of dozen items. Only the fact that the tags share a certain topic is just not enough. It's a start. Okay, so highlights are a good start. They are what initiates the processing and the learning process. But for those people who only study by highlighting and getting information and tagging them, for them, the highlighting and tagging constitutes the learning process. But what you have to do is you have to make smart notes. You have to do a lot more. You start with the highlights, that's true. But then you still have to process them, incorporate them, put them in your own words, put them in a space repetition system, elaborate on them and explicitly connect them with other notes. That's what we'll be working on in an entire module of the course. That's just basically learning the system. But for now, the takeaway is that you shouldn't rely on filtering too much because even if you manage to find the information that you're looking for in these 222 link references, you will still have a lot of more work to do. And I think similar objections apply to filtering blocks on a page. 
right? So not just the link reference of the fake news stack, but just really filtering blocks on the page because you shouldn't spend too much time on the page of the paper or book itself in the first place. These reference notes, the source material is only useful as input for your self-made notes, but they're not the end product. So similar as with these highlights, and they are the beginning, but you still have to do a lot of work on them because again, you haven't done any of the work to make it your own. Yep. You you're not understanding it. And what exactly that means you have to do and how you do that is something that we'll definitely cover. But for now, just see that there is a need here that this is just not enough. Also for writing, it doesn't help you as no underlying sentence will ever present itself when you need it in development of an argument. For that, you have to impose a structure by yourself. Your highlights important from the source should be clearly separated from the actual note archive where you're going to do your own thinking, the thing that we're going to build. So these reference notes, they only help you. They primarily exist to help you write your own durable notes. How to build that big system, that's the central thing of this course. But realize the source material is needed for that and just highlighting that and tagging that is a good first step. And the filtering can be useful in some sense, but it leaves a lot of work undone. So having said that, I hope that kind of uh, excites you for all the things that we're going to learn on how to really make the source material your own, how to build up your database of notes and your own thoughts, because that's what we'll be doing. Not in the next video, we still have a little bit of more groundwork to do, but that's going to be the bulk of this course. So I hope you're excited for that and I'll see you in the next video.